name is Laura Donna George. My name is Laura Donna George, and I'm on the PISA steering committee. I'm excited to have you join us today for the Kapal presentation. I want to also welcome new PISA members. I know that some have joined recently, and this might actually be your first uh, webinar. Um, so um, I hope to um, see you in future webinars, and so happy that you join the network. For those who our old timers like, like myself, I wanna just say hello and look forward to connecting with all of you. Um, today, we're, we're here to hear from Hannah Park about Kapal. And the way we'll proceed, Hannah will have, of course, a, a presentation, but you're welcome to pop your questions in the chat um, and she'll take questions as, uh, as she goes along, but we also will take questions at the end. So if that sounds good, Hannah, I'm just gonna turn this over to you and encourage you to um, start with a brief intro of who you are and of course share information about the program. All right, perfect. Well, thank you so much, um, Laura, Donna, Carmen, and Brittany for inviting me. I always love uh, presenting at the um, AFSIA webinars and being able to just meet all the amazing folks within the AFSIA network as well. And so just for a bit of background, um, on myself, my name is Hannah. I am the programs manager here at Kapal. I joined Kapal towards the end of 2020 and have been with the organization um, ever since. And so a lot of my day-to-day -day work at Kapal um, helps um, involving to coordinate our programming. And so this includes our scholarship and internship program, um, which we'll talk about more today, our Washington leadership program, as well as any other events that we put on uh, during the year. So that's just a bit about myself. Currently at Kapal, we are a um, virtual working company. So uh, our headquarters are based off in Washington, D.C., but I'm currently based down here in um, Atlanta, Georgia. So shout out to anyone else who is also based in the South as well. Um, but I do have a couple of slides prepared, so I'll go ahead and um, share my screen if folks can uh, see the screen with the slide deck. All right, perfect. Well, we can go ahead um, and get started. And as I go into the slides, uh, definitely feel free to introduce yourself um, in the chat box, your name, um, the college or university or uh, organization that you are a part of as well as your title. Always love seeing the folks that are um, in our audience. So definitely feel free to um, introduce yourself in the chat box and then we can go ahead and get started. So just for a bit of an overview of this presentation, um, today I will share just an overview of Kapal, who we are as an organization, our history, how we got started, as well as an overview of Kapal's programming. And so this includes our um, overarching scholarship and internship program, our Washington Leadership Program series, some of the professional development workshops that we offer, as well as our cohort sessions, our community action projects, as well as our closing ceremony. And then I'll also include a little bit of um, from what our former uh, cohort of scholars and interns from this past summer have shared about their summer experience with Kapal, as well as additional information on how to apply and then We'll close out with questions um, as well. All right, so just going into an overview of Kapal and who we are as an organization. So Kapal stands for the Conference on Asian Pacific American Leadership, but we just say Kapal for short because that name is a mouthful and super long to say every single time. So we just say Kapal. We are a nonprofit organization that was formed a little bit over 34 years ago back in 1989 in Washington, D.C. by a group of young Asian American professionals who were living and working in D.C. at the time in the public service sector. So these were folks who were working either in um, government or nonprofit groups or think tanks or advocacy organizations. And what they saw at the time, especially back in the um, late 1980s, was just a, a lack of representation from the Asian American Pacific Islander community, specifically within the public service sector. And so they founded Kapal with the intention of providing um, opportunities and resources and opening up 
pathways for young students and professionals within the Asian American, Native Hawaiian, and Pacific Islander community to pursue a career within public service. And so at Kapal, we really had grassroots beginnings. Um, the picture on the left, which is more of the aerial shot, that's a view from one of our very first meetings, which was um, convened in one of the founders' basements. So we definitely had a humble grassroots beginnings to the organization that we are today. And so our mission is to empower the Asian American, Native Hawaiian, and Pacific Islander, or AA and HPI youth, by increasing access to public service opportunities and building a strong AA and HPI public service pipeline. And we do this through our signature programming, which is our public service scholarship and internship program, which I'll talk more about today. And our main mission is to do this with the intention of um, creating and supporting equitable AA and HPI representation throughout all levels of public service. And so when we talk about public service, which is a phrase that we'll definitely use a lot today, we really just mean that wide umbrella of organizations, um, initiatives, individuals with the intention of giving back and empowering the community. And so we really just mean any jobs or opportunities with either federal, state, local, or tribal organizations, um, nonprofit organizations, advocacy groups, um, educational institutions, think tanks, um, research organizations, et cetera. And so really, again, just that wide umbrella of organizations and initiatives with the intention of giving back to the community. So going more into an overview of Kapal's programming, in 1989, when Kapal was founded, our founders launched our uh, first ever scholarship and internship program with the intention of teaching students and young professionals about the careers and opportunities that exist within public service and really just wanting to provide that network and build that community for students um, when they first embarked within their public service career. And so uh, Kapal's Public Service Scholarship and Internship Program, as well as our additional events and programming have evolved and changed throughout the years to become the program that it is today. And so currently at Kapal, we do offer two main programs for our students. So we have our Public Service Scholarship Program, as well as our Public Service um, Internship Program. And so our students, when they go into the application portal for Kapal, they have the option of either applying for our scholarship program or our internship program, or they also have the um, opportunity to apply for both. And so our public service scholarship program is where we award scholarships or stipends to either um, undergraduate or graduate students who at the time of their application have either already secured or are in the process of securing an unpaid uh, internship at a public service organization over the summer. And so um, the only requirements, again, we do ask for the scholarship program is that it is a summer internship, it is full time, it is unpaid, and again, it is at a public service organization. So this applies to, um, organizations like government agencies, um, congressional offices, uh, nonprofit organizations, advocacy, think tank organizations, et cetera. Our public service internship program is a little bit different. And so our public service internship program um, actually runs year round. And so at Kapal, we provide internship opportunities during the spring, summer, and fall. And this is where for our students at the time of their application, we help uh, match students or pair students with internships at one of our public service um, partner agencies. And so this includes government organizations like the US Forest Service or the US Department of Agriculture. We have also placed students at nonprofit organizations such as Act to Change or the Asian American Scholars Forum. And so from there, the student completes an internship, um, again, either during the spring, summer or fall. And very similar to the scholarship program, this is also a funded um, opportunity. And so whether the student comes through as a scholar or as an intern, Kapal will be providing that financial support for our students. So I would say that the main difference between our two programs is that for the scholarship program, the student is um, seeking out and uh, securing that internship independently. And Kapal will, will just provide that funding and that scholarship opportunity for them. 
versus the internship program, which is where we work very closely with the student to match them with an internship placement at one of our placement partner agencies. And just to give some more information about the public service internship program, our internship program does run year round. Uh, internships during the spring and fall can be part-time or full-time and internships that occur during the summer through Kapal are full-time only. And I would like to emphasize that again, Kapal's public service scholarship program only runs during the summer. So if we have a student who is say uh, seeking funding for a fall internship that they have secured, unfortunately Kapal cannot provide uh, that scholarship funding. And so in terms of our general programming dates, Spring internships through Kapal typically run February to May. Our summer internships run June to August, and then our fall internships typically run uh, September to December. So those are the general internship dates, although I will say that the specific start and end dates will vary depending on the internship agency. And I see that we do have a question in the chat box for Michelle who asked how much are the scholarships? So at Kapal, we do provide a $3,000 stipend for all of our students. So this applies for both the scholarship program as well as the internship program. Kapal does provide a $3,000 stipend. And in addition to that, if the internship um, is in person, so say if the student has to relocate or fly out to the internship location, or if they incur any um, transportation costs like commuting into the internship, Kapal does provide up to $500 in travel reimbursement to cover any transportation costs. And so this applies for both the scholarship as well as the internship program. And this is just a snapshot at what some of our previous internship sites have looked like. So in the past, we have placed students at government agencies such as the US Forest Service or the White House Initiative on Asian Americans Native Hawaiians and Pacific Islanders. We have also placed students at uh, nonprofits such as the Center for the Study of Social Policy or the National Asian American Pacific Islander Mental Health Association. And then in addition, we have also placed students at think tanks such as the Brookings Institute. And so additional information about our previous placement sites can be found on our website. I will say that our list of, of uh, placement partners does change year after year. And so some of our internship sites will remain the same summer after summer. And then we may have um, new partnerships and opportunities for this upcoming uh, summer as well too. All right, so moving forward, these are just some general questions that we get from students um, year after year in terms of the general programming as well as the application process. So I thought that I would just share some of these here. So one big question that we get is, will internships be performed in person or virtually this year? And I will say that during COVID at the height of the pandemic, all of our internships shifted to being 100% virtual. But as the years have gone on and things have slowly opened up, we have been getting more and more internships that are either hybrid or in person. So I will say that it is definitely dependent upon the internship agency, as well as the specific internship site on whether the internship will be virtual, hybrid or in person. In the case where the internship is in person, Kapal does provide support for um, providing housing resources, as well as um, transportation resources for the student. And I will also add that we that within the actual application as well, students have the option to put down on whether they prefer a virtual or in-person internship. And if the internship is also in person, say the student has a preference for um, a particular city or say they have a preference for staying on the East Coast, they can indicate all of those location preferences within the application as well. And then on our end, we, we do our best to match the student with any um, internship opportunities that best align with those preferences. Another question that we get is, can I apply to multiple programs? And that is with a huge yes, um, our students can apply for both the public service internship as well as the scholarship all within the same application. And within that application, our students can indicate if they have a um, preference for which program they would like to be considered for first. 
And so these are the general programming dates for our application. So typically applications for each year open up um, in that previous uh, November of that year. So our 2024 applications opened up on um, November 6, 2023. Our deadline for spring internships was December 15th. Our deadline for the summer scholarship and internship program was February 12th. However, I would like to note that our applications are currently still open for fall internships. So if there are any um, undergraduate, graduate students or recent graduates who are interested in interning at a public service organization this fall, um, applications for that will close on July 12th and they can apply at our website here and also happy to circulate that link um, after the webinar as well. And I would like to note that the application for our 2025 scholarship and internship program will open up in November of this year. And then lastly, we do get questions on whether there is an internship stipend. And like we talked about before, at Kapal, we do provide a $3,000 stipend for each student. And typically, um, applications are reviewed on a rolling basis. So we definitely encourage students to get their um, applications in as soon as they can. So going more into the actual public service scholarship and internship program, one unique thing about Kapal programming is that in addition to completing an internship, our scholars and interns do participate in Kapal's additional programming. And this is because we really just wanted to provide a holistic programming for our students and really just be able to provide the opportunities and resources for them so that after the program is over, they feel empowered and supported to pursue their public service career. And so in addition to completing an internship, our students also participate in Kapal's Washington Leadership Program, our 101 Mentorship Program, our professional development workshops, cohort sessions, they also collaborate on a community action project, and they also participate in our closing ceremony. I do wanna note that these requirements for participating in Kapal's additional programming is specific for our summer cohort only. Our spring and fall interns will have their own set of programming that they will be required to complete. Typically, the programming for our spring and fall interns um, is a little bit lighter. It's uh, definitely not as robust just because we are aware that, especially during the, during the spring and fall semesters, um, our students will also be enrolled in classes as well too. But I would like to note that for any students who come through Kapal's programming during the spring or fall, um, any programming that isn't offered during their term, we do open it up for them to um, participate in during the summer as well. So just sharing some more information about our Washington Leadership Program. This is our weekly series of panel discussions. They typically occur um, Wednesday evenings from June to July, where we invite leaders from the AA and HPI community to talk about different um, issue areas and topics that are very pertinent to our community today. And so some previous uh, session topics that we have covered have included panel discussions surrounding data disaggregation within the AA and HPI community. We've had sessions surrounding um, cross community building within the AA and HPI community. And then we've even had session topics um, surrounding um, immigrational experiences within the AA and HPI community. And so this is just a snapshot of what our previous summer uh, 2023 Washington leadership program looked like. Our general theme was the future of AA and HPIs in public service. And we had different session topics surrounding um, things like AA and HPI media representation and advocacy. We even had one around um, AA and HPIs in national security and international affairs. And so these sessions are also open to the public. So they're not just for our cohort. And so we invite any students Young, uh, young professionals, folks who are interested in these topics or just wanting to get to know more about them to definitely attend. And um, these are just really great opportunities for our students to either deepen their knowledge or to learn about new issues that are currently affecting our communities today, and also to directly connect with the speakers as well. And so for this upcoming summer in 2024, we are planning to have our Washington Leadership Program series um, in person in Washington, DC. These will also be hybrid events as well, where we will be inviting both in-person and virtual speakers, as well as in-person and 
virtual attendees. And so regardless of where the student is based, whether they're based in DC during the summer or whether they're based um, somewhere across the US, they will be able to participate um, as well. Anna, there's and then, a question, sorry. Oh, yes. So we do have a question from Mia and they shared that um, you have a private list of intern sites that you match folks with. Is that correct? How many placement sites are left for the summer? Yes, yeah, so that is correct. So at Kapal for our public service internship program, we do have a list of uh, placement partners that we match our applicants with. And so I would say typically for every summer, we have, um, I think ranging from 25 to 30 internship placements that we do match students with. And so our cohort size is ranging from 25 to 30 per summer. And within each internship organization, there can be as many as um, one internship opening or position that they have, or we do have some internship placement partners where they are hiring or looking for um, multiple positions as well too. And so during the summer, we may have students who are working at the um, same organization, either within the same office or with different supervisors, but just housed under that same organization. But yes, to answer your question, we do typically have 25 to 30 um, placement partner sites that we do offer um, each summer. And then I would say during the spring and fall, those numbers are a little bit different. I would say we have around five to 10 internship sites um, during the spring and fall. All right, and so going more into the structure of each Washington Leadership Program session, each session is structured with a panel discussion followed by a Q&A and then an optional networking or mingling afterwards. In terms of the expectations for our cohort, we do ask our students to attend all sessions and also to fill out a reflection worksheet as well after the session is over. So going more into the professional development component of Kapal's programming. So we have four main pillars for our professional development series. This includes our one-on-one -on -one mentoring, our professional development workshops, our roundtable series, as well as general networking opportunities and socials that we have during the summer. So our one-on-one -on -one mentoring program is definitely one of the highlights of Kapal's program. Um, I can say from personal experience, summer after summer, we have students um, come out of the program and say that they really enjoyed being able to connect and build that um, connection with their mentor during the summer. So as part of our one-on-one -on -one mentoring program, at the beginning of the summer, we pair each student in our um, cohort with a Kapal mentor. And so this is either a Kapal alumni, so a former um, board member or a former scholar or intern. Um, we can also pair students with current board members as well. And so at the beginning of the summer, we pair students with a Kapal mentor based on shared uh, career interests or backgrounds or experiences. And so say, for example, we have a student who is really curious about going into the law field or, or applying to law school. We do our best to identify a mentor within our pool who either um, has that experience or that guidance or that knowledge. And then from there, both the mentor and mentee meet on a weekly or biweekly basis. During the summer, we really leave it up to the mentor and mentee to establish the schedule and the cadence of meetings that works best with them. But we do encourage them to meet on a um, regular basis during the summer. And so typically our mentoring program has been virtual, but in the case where we do have a mentor-mentee pair where they are based in the same area or city, we definitely encourage in-person meetups as well. We also have a professional development workshop series. These occur on a biweekly basis during the summer where we invite a um, career coach or a facilitator to establish sessions with our students. And during our professional development workshop series, we cover a wide range of topics ranging from um, how to navigate the job application process, how to tailor your resume for different um, areas within public service, how to demystify networking. We also cover soft skills such as how to advocate for yourself in the workplace, and then we also do a lot of um, leadership building, communication skills building exercises within these professional development workshops as well too. 
And then we also have a roundtable series, which runs throughout the year. And so this is our one programming component that doesn't just occur during the summer. And this is where we invite a public service partner organization to talk about different um, career pathways and opportunities that exist within that organization. So I would like to note that our roundtable series is also open to the public as well. And so we invite any students and young professionals from colleges all across the country to tune in to our roundtable series. Some organizations that we have partnered with in the past have included um, public service agencies, such as the US Department of State or the Peace Corps or the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation. And um, these occur on a virtual platform, which is great for students. So wherever they're based in the US, they're able to tune in. And these are just really great opportunities for students to directly connect with recruiters from these agencies and learn about different um, opportunities, whether they're fellowships or internship opportunities or job openings um, at these public service organizations. And then I see that we do have a question in the chat from Kathleen and they ask, do you uh, is, um, assist or provide housing for those coming from a distance for the summer programming? So at Kapal, we do not directly provide housing for our students, but we do provide a housing resource guide for our students during the summer. And these provide um, links and resources for students to be able to secure housing for their summer internships. And so in the case where the internship is in person, we work very closely with the student to make sure that they are able to um, have that housing for the summer. I would also like to note that for some of our placement partners, uh, specifically some of our government agencies, I won't say that for all the internship placements, but for some of them, government housing may be available for some of these internships as well, too, in the case um, where the student would be able to fly out or relocate to the internship location. And then Lordana asks, how do we learn about the roundtable series so we can share with students? Yes. And so any information about upcoming events and roundtable series can be found on our Kapal website. We also post all information about our upcoming events on social media um, at Kapal DC. We are on Facebook, um, LinkedIn, Instagram, Twitter. And then we also have a general um, listserv as well too, where we share any updates about um, upcoming programming and events um, as well too. And then lastly, we have general networking opportunities with our students. And so these are socials that we have during the summer, either with um, Kapal alumni or the Kapal community. And then we also partner with other intern organizations as well, such as OCA or um, API Vote or APACS. And these are just great opportunities for our students to get to bond um, both with the Kapal community and Kapal alumni, and then also be able to meet other intern cohorts as well too. All right, and I see that we do have some more questions in the chat, so I will pause here to answer some of these questions. We have um, one around um, the internship program, and they share that given that for some of your programs, students arrange their own internship, does that increase the number of slots that are available? Could you also clarify for which program students arrange their own internships? Yes. So for students that are arranging and securing their own internships, they would apply through our public service scholarship program. So that is where at Kapal, we award a scholarship where students have uh, secured their own internship independently for the summer at a public service organization. And in terms of the uh, number of slots that increase or that are available, I would say at the beginning of the application cycle, we have a general number of um, slots or placements that we have within our cohort, both for our scholars, so for students who are independently securing their internship, as well as for um, students that we place with one of our internship placement partners. So I would say that it's um, a set number that we have for each year. And typically the ratio is that within each cohort, we have around, um, I would say 25 to 30 interns. So these are students that we place at internships at our um, placement partner agencies. And then we typically have around five, five to six scholars per year. And then we also have a question about um, 
a sense of how competitive it is. You mentioned the application for this summer is still open. Is there one specific site left where we could look for a student who is a um, good fit? Yes, yeah, so I would say that in terms of the um, competitiveness, I would say that it does depend year after year, just depending on A, how many internship placements we have available for that summer and also how many internship applications um, we have. But I would say that in terms of the actual competitiveness of the program, it does fluctuate year after year, just depending on those numbers. And I think there was also one other part. Is there one specific site left where we could look for a student who is a good fit? So the um, application for summer internships did close on February 12th, but our applications for fall internships are still open and those close on um, July 12th. And so if there's any students or folks in your network who you feel like would um, be interested in applying, definitely encourage them to um, reach out or take a look at our application portal. We also had one question about eligibility. So do students have to be enrolled at the time of application or are they expected to remain enrolled in the term following their internship period? Yes, so in terms of eligibility, we um, say that both currently enrolled students as well as recent graduates are welcome to apply to our internship. So whether they're undergraduate or graduate students, um, whether these are recent graduates where they graduated right before the summer term has begun, and even students who are say taking a gap year. So if they are planning to maybe attend um, graduate school in that fall, but they are not currently enrolled in college right now, they would also still be eligible to apply for the program as well. And then we also had a, a question from Kathleen. Do you assist or sorry about the internship stipend? I'm not super familiar with the cost of living in DC for short term stays. Is the $3,000 stipend uh, sufficient to pay for all of their housing and other expenses during a full time internship? or would they need to supplement with their own funds? If so, roughly how much? Most of my students are low income and unfortunately we, we do not have any endowments to subsidize at our public university. Yes, so at Kapal, we do provide a minimum $3,000 stipend for all of our students. However, I would like to share that in the past, especially if the internship has been in person and if the student has had to relocate, our students have asked if they have been able to either uh, combine sources of funding or go with another source of funding that um, is able to provide more financial support. So I would say that for both the scholarship program and the internship program, if the student does come through and say they are awarded the $3,000 stipend, but they are also um, receiving funding, say through a uh, university scholarship program on Kapal's end, that is fine with us. We want to be able to make sure that the student is able to be supported for that summer. So if they are um, receiving multiple sources of funding to support the living expenses of their summer internship on Kapal's end, that is completely fine with us. I would say that the only um, caveat that we do have is that if a student is participating um, in Kapal and receiving funding through us, and they are also part of another program that is very similar to Kapal, so another um, third party organization that is providing funding for an internship and helping to place that student. Unfortunately, we would not be able to support that. So again, the only, I think, requirement that we have is that the student cannot be participating in um, uh, two programs. So another program that is similar to Kapal, but if they are supporting funding from other sources as well, then we would definitely um, support that. And then we have a question about clarifying the deadlines. Yes, so in terms of our 2024 applications, both the deadline for spring and summer have passed, but our um, applications for fall 2024 internships are currently open and those will close on Friday, um, July 12th. And we do have a question from Heidi and they shared what qualities are you looking for in applicants? I think for the most part, in terms of our applicants, we are really looking for students who are really curious and passionate about pursuing a public service career. Um, this doesn't just mean that they have to be majoring in say uh, political science, 
or liberal arts, but I would just say that any students who are curious about either uh, pursuing a career in public service, whether that means um, maybe interested in getting experience in working within a government agency or a nonprofit organization or within community development, I would just say that that passion and that curiosity is definitely something that we look for within um, our students. All right, so going into our cohort session. So this is another component of Kapal's programming. These occur on a biweekly basis during the summer. And our cohort sessions is really just an opportunity for our students to develop those um, cohort bonds and build those connections within their cohort. I think at Kapal, we do recognize that one of the unique aspects of Kapal programming is the ability for students who may not have had the opportunity to meet each other otherwise, to be able to come together during the summer and be able to share their common experiences um, within the AA and HPI community, as well as within working in public service. And so we do a lot of identity building activities within these cohort sessions. And we also um, talk about topics such as how to um, connect your identity with your career and within the professional development sphere as well. And lastly, we have our community action projects. And this is a really great way for our students to gain hands-on experience working directly with a nonprofit partner agency during the summer. And so at the beginning of the summer, we place our students into small groups. These are usually groups of four to five students. And from there, we pair them with a nonprofit community partner. These are usually um, organizations that are doing really great work in the AA. Um, PI community on the ground throughout the US. And from there, our groups, our students work very closely with that nonprofit partner organization to develop a um, deliverable or a project that they then present at the end of the summer at our closing ceremony. And so some nonprofit organizations that we have partnered with in the past have included um, Act to Change or API Vote. We've also partnered with um, nonprofits such as the Climate Initiative. And this is just a really great opportunity for our students to not only gain that experience working directly with a nonprofit, but also be able to build their leadership skills, their um, teamwork skills, as well as being able to sharpen their hard skills as well. And so we've had some students who have worked on more research oriented projects. We've had students who have worked on more uh, community development or outreach projects, but I think overall, these are just a really great experience for our students to give back to the community and again, get that hands-on experience working with a nonprofit organization. And so on the right here, these are just a few examples of what our 2023 CAP projects looks like. One of our students was paired with the Asian American Student um, Academic Program at the University of Illinois, Chicago. And this was a really cool project. Like I mentioned before, some of our students work with nonprofit organizations, but this group was given the opportunity to work with a um, higher educational institution. And so our group worked very closely with the Asian American um, Student Resource Center there to develop uh, workshop ideas, um, curriculum ideas to best serve the AAPI community there. And so they did a lot of research surrounding the Asian American Pacific Islander um, student community at the University of Illinois, Chicago. And they also um, worked very hard on building workshop ideas such as financial literacy or adjustment to college life for the Asian American um, student program there. And so these were some of our 2023 CAP partners. And so we uh, collaborated and worked with organizations like Act to Change, the Center for Asian Pacific American Women, Papa Ola Lakai, uh, the University of, of Illinois, Chicago, as well as the National Asian American Pacific Islander Mental Health Association. And lastly, we have our closing ceremony. And so this is the capstone event at the end of the summer, where we really just celebrate and uplift and highlight everything that our scholars and interns have achieved during that summer. Um, this is a virtual event, and this is where we invite everyone who has helped make our summer programming possible. And so we invite our internship partners, supervisors, our mentors, our um, CAP partners, our workshop facilitators, our speakers, 
as well as the general Kapal alumni. And um, this event is also where our students will be presenting their community action project. So it's really just a nice event to wrap up the summer and really just again to highlight and um, celebrate everything that our students have achieved. So I wanted to give a glimpse into what some of our former scholars and interns have had to say about the Kapal programming after the summer is over. And so here we have Quay and Nari, which was um, who were our 2023 summer interns. And Quay was placed um, through Kapal at the US Department of Agriculture, um, NRCS Wisconsin placement site. And so she actually flew out to Madison, Wisconsin and um, interned at their uh, headquarters there. And at the end of her summer with Kapal, she shared that one of her most valuable opportunities was the opportunity to network. She really enjoyed just being able to meet the Kapal cohort, other college students who were really passionate about issues within the community as well as within public service um, as well. And so um, this was just a really great opportunity for her, again, to be able to engage in work at a public service agency and also able to engage with the Kapal cohort as well. And I think one of the main reasons why I wanted to highlight Quay was that during her internship, um, she actually had an experience where she was able to not only learn a lot of skills from her internship, but also be able to apply some of the skills that she um, previously had to the internship program. And so Quay actually took the initiative to start an um, independent research project at um, NRCS Wisconsin to develop uh, language tools and outreach tools to outreach to the local um, Hmong uh, farmer community there. So there was a large network of Hmong um, farmers who were working within the agricultural sector within Wisconsin. And she actually took it upon herself to work with the internship organization to strengthen their outreach efforts to the community. And so it was just really amazing to see her flourish and really just to see her take all of the previous knowledge and skills that she had and apply it to her internship during the summer. And Nari was another one of our interns who we placed at the um, USDA Animal and Plant Health Inspection Service. And at the end of her summer, she shared that she was able to, again, just gain really valuable experience, connections at her internship, and also be able to find a community and a family within the Kapal cohort as well. So lastly, these are just some information on how to apply. So all interested applicants can visit our website at www.kapal.org, where they can complete our online application. And in addition to completing the application form, we ask for our students to share a personal statement. And this is really where our applicants shine within the application. It provides a snapshot of, 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 of sorry, of who they are beyond the resume and the transcript. And so we ask for them um, what drew them to apply to Kapal as well as what public service means to them. We also ask for a resume, a letter of recommendation, as well as an academic transcript. And if um, applicants or students have more questions or want more details, we definitely encourage them to reach out um, at hannah.park at kapal.org. And like I mentioned before, applications are currently open for fall 2024 internships and applications for Kapal's 2025 scholarship and internship program will open in November of 2024. And then lastly, um, definitely be sure to follow us um, on social media. We are at Kapal DC on Facebook, X or formerly Twitter, uh, LinkedIn, Instagram, and we also have a monthly newsletter where we share updates about Kapal programming and events as well too. So if students want to get connected and want to learn about any um, upcoming opportunities that we have, definitely encourage them to follow us on social media. So I think that about wraps it up on my end. So happy to take any questions, comments that folks may have. And I have a quick question. For the part-time opportunities, are there a typical number of hours that students might intern? Yes, that is a great question. So all internships at Kapal, um, whether they are full-time or part-time, are, are typically 320 hours. So our summer internships, which are full-time, do run from eight weeks. So typically June to July is when they run. 
And then for the um, part-time internships during the fall and spring, depending on how the student and the supervisor divide up the 320 hours, those can run from um, more, I would say 10 to 12 weeks. Thank you. Yeah, this has been terrific. Um, if there, please feel free to ask any other questions while we have Hannah here. We just have a few more minutes. Yeah, you're getting some nice kudos. Excellent presentation. So, I know um, people, there is something that comes to mind. Um, Brittany actually mentioned to me that she's a Kapal alum. So I was wondering if I could put Brittany on the spot to just share a few quick things about her experience or any tips that she might recommend. Hi, Brittany. Hi, Laura Donna. Before I start, I did see a question about a recording of the webinar. Yes, it will be available on our YouTube page and I email it out to registrants. So if you're here today, then you will receive it in your inbox. Um, I'm sorry, the link to the recording. Um, and regarding my experience with Kapal, um, the Kapal team is great. I love Hannah. The board is also so approachable. So in terms of mentorship and being able to communicate with them, I thought it was a very open environment. And I felt very comfortable to ask questions about my future and things like that. Um, the experience itself, um, I was a public service scholar in 2021, and I did my um, fellowship with um, Human Rights First, working on legislative advocacy and communications. Um, during that time, I was doing the fellowship full-time and I participated in the summer programming. Um, it is a robust program, like Hannah said, but I learned so much, not a but, I'm sorry, and I learned so much. Um, because I was a full-time graduate student, the Kapal team was very, very flexible with me. Um, if I couldn't make a certain session because I was gonna be in class, um, I could watch the recording and um, send in my reflections later on. Um, so I thought that I was able to balance um, the Kapal programming with my school very well. I also wanted to mention that um, the Community Action Project, um, I worked with Act to Change, who um, Hannah has mentioned a couple of times. Um, they're awesome too. We created a proposal to develop um, a youth ambassador program with them. And it's great to see my proposal kind of come to life. I can keep up with it on the Act to Change uh, website even years down the road. Um, so that's great. And I did present on it um, during the closing ceremony with my team. Um, who was made up of other Kapals um, in my cohort. Um, it was a mix of graduate and undergraduate students. So it was great to meet folks from across the US. And something I should highlight is that um, I really saw how diverse the Asian American um, Native and Pacific Island community really was. I learned a lot through the WLPs, um, specifically about um, just the different issues that affect different cohorts in our communities. Um, like, I don't, I don't need to get too deep into it, but I'm very grateful to Hannah and the Kapal team. I'll pass it back over to Hannah for additional comments and Laura Donna. Yeah, thank you for sharing, Brittany. It's great to hear, um, you know, your perspective. And that last point was um, very um, helpful to hear as well. Happy to share. Hannah, do you want to add anything? Um, I think I think just on my end, just want to um, reiterate everything that Brittany shared. Brittany was amazing. So she was um, our 2021 scholar and she 
actually joined my first summer that I came on to Kapal. So it was just a really amazing experience just being able to have her join um, Kapal's cohort. And just, again, just be able to see just the work that her, um, you know, that her CAP group did, as well as the work that she completed um, at her internship as well, too. And then I think um, you did mention how our sessions are recorded. And so all of our Washington Leadership Program sessions are recorded for our students as well, um, in the case if they can't make an event. Um, I know that we do have a little bit of time left. So I did want to share something that did come to mind, uh, Lord Donna, when you did ask about the hour requirements as well as the length for our internships. So most of our internships are 320 hours. So they typically just run during say like a spring term or a summer term, but we do have a, um, special program that I don't think there was time to include, but happy to follow up uh, afterwards as well via email with additional information. But we do have a program specifically tailored to students who are in the STEM field. So students who are say like pursuing a career in environmental science or biology or statistics where they have the opportunity to complete a 640 hour internship uh, with the U.S. Forest Service. So this is a very specialized, more of a, a career pathways internship for students that can potentially convert into full-time employment afterwards. But these are um, hands-on field internships. So students are invited to go out to U.S. Forest Service placement sites. Usually government housing um, is available for these internships and students have the opportunity to intern either for two consecutive um, terms. So either like summer into fall, fall into spring or through um, asynchronous semesters as well, just depending on what works with the student schedules. And a lot of these internships, again, are geared more towards students within the STEM field. And in terms of compensation, the student would be compensated for the hours work. So it would be more than the um, $3,000 stipend. And these are really intended for students who are interested in getting involved in the environmental science field, who are interested in working directly with the US Forest Service. And for that application, mm -hmm. it is a smaller pool. We don't have as many um, internship placements per year as our general program, but they do apply through a separate um, application portal on our website and happy to share more uh, information about that as well too. Hannah, is that open to undergrads and grad students? Yes, so it is open to both undergraduate graduate students um, as well as recent graduates as well. So if students are taking a gap year or even if they're say um, one to two years out of college, it is open to um, recent graduates as well. Thank you. So we're almost out of time. Any last questions? I think, um, so Hannah, please take a quick look at the chat so you could see how um, grateful everyone is. Um, and I just wanna join them in thanking you. So if you don't, um, I'm gonna encourage everyone to um, uh, do the virtual clap for Hannah. Um, and just wanna thank you so much for this presentation. It's really, um, you really packed in a lot of information and I wanna thank everyone who asked questions and chimed in really helpful as well. So with that, I think we can give everyone a few minutes um, back and Carmen and Brittany, would you like to add anything or close us with anything? One last round of thank yous to you as well, Lord Anna, for, for chairing this great session and to Hannah and to Brittany for organizing it. Um, and then a couple quick bits of advertisement. We do a session like this every month to help you learn about new opportunities. So we hope you'll join us in April when we look at the U.S. Foreign Service Internship Program, which is an amazing two-year fully funded opportunity for students to get international experience as well as experience at the Department of State. Um, and then lots of other sessions coming and you'll learn about each of those in my Friday message. We also have lots of content for your students directly including this Thursday's open office hours where they can just come and talk about whatever's on their mind, monthly sessions on thinking about applying to graduate school to make that a little less scary and, and demystified, uh, as well as we have a number of opportunities for students to build direct relationships with grad schools coming up. So lots more content coming your way and for your students. And we look forward to seeing you then. Thanks so much again, everybody. Have a great day. Thank you.